Greetings, I'm Bill Mobley, Chair of the Department of Neurosciences here at UCSD, and you're watching Neurosciences Connections. Uh, in this segment, I'd like to uh, introduce you to Jim Brewer. James Brewer, MD, PhD, is a uh, assistant professor in radiology and in neurosciences, and is really exploring the edge of what we know about a disease called Alzheimer's disease. And so, Jim, welcome. Thank and you. Let us know uh, what you're up to and what we can look forward to in the future. Great. Yeah, I'd like to. Um, um, it's a pleasure to give, have the opportunity to tell you about what I've been doing here. Uh, you know a little bit about it because I was uh, at Stanford when you were right. over there. Right. And uh, I'm really excited to be down here with you again. That's and great. Uh, so I'm working on a disease called Alzheimer's disease. There's a real problem with Alzheimer's disease, and that's that the disease is unable to be diagnosed at an early enough stage to make a real difference in these patients' lives, I think. Uh, I first became interested in Alzheimer's disease when I was working at uh, Berkeley as an undergraduate. I worked with a guy named Bill Jagus who did mm -hmm. PET scanning of Alzheimer's patients. I was uh, the undergraduate who was uh, interacting with the patients, trying to keep them comfortable and allow them to stay still in the scanner, the mm -hmm. positron emission tomography scanner, which looked at brain activity. Uh, and through those interactions, I became very fascinated with the disease and, and very touched by the patient's stories. Mm. These patients would come to me and tell me that, look, mm. you know, they know what's coming. And mm. it was so heartbreaking because mm. we didn't have anything to offer to them. Right. And uh, the real problem is that even if we do become, come up with something to offer them, uh, it's going to be at a stage where they're already unable to do the activities of the daily life that they uh, typically were doing as a, as a middle-aged person. Mm. So I'm really working on pushing back the diagnosis as early as possible mm. so that we can intervene at a time when the person still retains their function. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully at the very earliest stages where a person comes to a neurologist and says, you know what, I think my memory's slipping. Mm. The problem there is that at that stage it's very difficult to know if this is just benign memory impairment of aging or if it really is something to be extremely concerned about. Right. If you are concerned, uh, right now there's no medication that is actually going to intervene in the, hmm. in the progress, progression of the disease. There's so, medicines, I guess, to treat it, but you're saying that these medicines don't reverse it. That's true. I see. That's right. Uh -huh. they, they reverse the symptoms in some mild amount, uh -huh. but uh, they actually don't halt the progression of the disease. So right. in the end, the person continues to get more and more demented. Right. Uh, I am uh, the principal investigator on a clinical trial that is trying to mm -hmm. uh, actually halt the progression of the disease. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, these, disease, these um, medications are not exactly benign, so it's right. yet another reason why uh, we need to be sure that this person is going on to Alzheimer's disease before we expose them to the risks of these new medications. Sure. So as you know, I'm part of the radiology and neurosciences department, so we're looking at a really new, fancy, and exciting techniques in neuroimaging to look at the structure that is damaged by this disease, mm. and that's mm -hmm. the brain. Mm -hmm. So uh, yet another problem is that as a physician, I'm also a neurologist, and we send a patient to neuroimaging to get some information from the radiologist. They take this exquisite picture of the brain, mm -hmm and yet they translate it into a paragraph of text mm -hmm. that we end up getting back. And I think that's totally inadequate. Mm. I think there's a lot more information in these brain, brain images uh, that is not being uh, given back to the physician. Mm -hmm. So what we're working on, and I'm collaborating with a colleague, Anders Dale, mm -hmm. who uh, also is in the Department of Neurosciences and Radiology, uh, uh, and we're looking at ways to trans uh, to make this information more quantitative. Mm -hmm. Tell me how much of this structure has shrunken mm -hmm. from the last visit. Mm -hmm. That's very important because we know where this disease ends up uh, affecting the brain. And shrinkage is a part of the disease process. Shrinkage is absolutely ah. a part of the disease mm -hmm. process and mm -hmm. it's very linked to the cognitive difficulties mm -hmm. that these patients have. Mm -hmm. We know that a structure called the hippocampus, it's mm -hmm. the memory structure of the brain, is the first area to die, to, to sort of be damaged in an mm -hmm. Alzheimer's disease. So if mm -hmm. we can look at the size of the hippocampus mm -hmm. and give you accurate information about how much this structure is being damaged by the mm -hmm. disease, mm -hmm. we can get a much better sense mm -hmm. of, of uh, whether the person has Alzheimer's and disease or not. And almost predict the future on the basis of that measurement, is actually, what you're we, suggesting. Yeah. You're right. We actually yeah. have a paper out that shows that mm. baseline measures of the hippocampus can mm -hmm. tell you whether your patient is going to decline rapidly even in the next six months mm -hmm. or not. How, how far 
how much of a clue do we have? How early is the clue that Alzheimer's disease may be the diagnosis? How early can you go? How, how early in the course can one say to a patient, our imaging data is uh, telling us that you have a very high risk for having Alzheimer's well, disease? One of the most exciting bits of information that came out of the Alzheimer's Disease Neuroimaging Initiative, uh -huh. which I also am the site PI here for that right. uh, initiative, uh, is that we have patients who are uh, in the earliest stages of memory complaint, that's a syndrome called mild cognitive impairment, right. but we also have elderly controls. People that are uh, in their older stages, uh, or their uh, elderly age, but they are also without any complaint. Mm -hmm. I've been very interested in looking in that group. So yeah. even before a complaint occurs, yes. and I have uh, some data that I presented at the International Conference of Alzheimer's Disease that shows that even in that stage, even uh -huh. before the clinician picks up any complaint or even before the patient right. has a complaint, right. we can see that there's abnormal huh. shrinkage in, in a subset of those elderly controls. So this is a powerful tool. I think it's an extremely powerful right. tool. It's a, super exciting to me because mm -hmm. I think that uh, it could really change how we practice. But is this a tool available to the average physician, to the average neurologist, to the person who's not working in academia? Well, the nice thing, and this is one of the uh, really exciting things about, about uh, my being part of the research lab and being a clinician, and also having that, that joint appointment with radiology and neurosciences, through a collaboration with neurosciences and radiology, we've been able to put together a, uh, uh, a procedure that is available to be uh, for, for physicians to refer their patients to UCSD mm -hmm. to get quantitative neuroimaging nice. done. So they send you the images, do they? They, they actually send the patient to our uh -huh. scanning center. Okay. We scan them with, our, uh, with just a regular clinical scan, except it has to be a high resolution scan. Right. And then we take those images, we translate it into a quantitative report that goes back to the physicians. Mm -hmm. The physicians have been delighted with this. They've I actually said that showing these to the patient mm -hmm. has been so helpful because it actually gives them a visual yes. image of the brain as it as it uh, is either healthy or yeah. not healthy. Sort of seeing as believing. Yeah. yeah. For the patient, very powerful. That's what yeah. we've heard back Great. from them. Yeah. Great. So where do you go from here, Jim? I think, again, I think we've, we've been looking at even more advanced imaging techniques, mm -hmm. uh, techniques to look at how water moves within the brain. Mm -hmm. Water tends to diffuse within the brain along uh, tracks of uh, white matter. These mm -hmm. are connections between neurons. Mm -hmm. And we think that may be a very sensitive measure mm -hmm. of the earliest neurodegeneration that occurs in That's Alzheimer's exciting. disease and other dementias. Mm -hmm. We want to apply this to other neurodegenerative diseases so that we can get a signature pattern mm -hmm. of things like dementia with Lewy bodies, which mm -hmm. is a, the second most common dementia uh, uh, that affects patients. And mm -hmm. we want to be able to disentangle that mm -hmm. from Alzheimer's disease mm -hmm. because the treatment of those patients with mm -hmm. dementia with Lewy bodies is going to be quite different mm -hmm. than Alzheimer's. And yet it's very difficult to tell apart clinically. Mm -hmm. And in terms of, let's talk about treatment, how, does, how do these new neuroimaging tools make treatment more possible? So I also work with the Alzheimer's Disease Cooperative Study, which is a major uh, uh, resource here at UCSD. Mm -hmm. It's a multi-site uh, study that mm -hmm. uh, that is run and coordinated here at UCSD. Paul Dr. Azen's, Paul, yep, uh -huh. Paul Azen is uh -huh. the person who's the principal investigator of that. Right. I work with him as the imaging coordinator of that of mm -hmm. all those studies that come out of there. So we're looking at the possibility of using neuroimaging as one of the outcome measures mm -hmm. for treating mm -hmm. uh, a patient with Alzheimer's disease. So it takes a long time to see if a drug is having an effect on a person's cognition. Right. Uh, especially if it's a disease modifying effect. Mm -hmm. It's not a, if it doesn't affect the symptoms, mm -hmm. but it only halts the progression of the disease, mm -hmm. you really need to have a different biomarker and mm -hmm. say, is this drug having an effect mm -hmm. on the disease itself? Mm -hmm. I can't wait for the person's memory to slowly mm -hmm. halt declining. So mm -hmm. it just takes way too long. Mm -hmm. So we've found that these neuroimaging measures are extremely powerful to shorten a trial mm -hmm. and allow you to know whether a drug mm -hmm. is getting into the brain mm -hmm. and whether it's having an effect. It's exciting. I think it's very exciting. Exciting. And you're part of this, uh, Jim, in an important way, but you have, you've already mentioned a lot of very helpful colleagues here at UCSD. I guess uh, coming here recently, I was terribly impressed by all the 
resources we have here. I, this has got to be one of the most distinguished places on earth for there is, studying and treating Alzheimer's disease. There's absolutely no doubt about it. I mean, as you know, I came from uh, Stanford, which is a very big name university. I, I went to Johns Hopkins for my neurology training and uh, none of them questioned my decision to move to University mm -hmm. of California, San Diego, mm -hmm. because we are top in neuroimaging and we mm -hmm. are absolutely mm -hmm. top in Alzheimer's disease research. It's an extremely exciting time. All the images of the uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease neuroimaging initiative coming from Hopkins, coming from Harvard, coming mm -hmm. from Washington University, coming right. from University of California, San Francisco, mm -hmm. all come to UCSD mm -hmm. to be processed in mm -hmm. images and, image, and, uh, and analyzed. Mm -hmm. So it really shows the power of uh, this, this university. And, Those and guys know how good we are. I, <laughs> I think they do. <laughs> Jim, you're part of it, and I thank you for being part of it. A really motivating uh, presence, uh, uh, a young scientist whose contributions are already really stellar and uh, We'll certainly continue. Thank you very much. Very Jim. much. I want to mention a website. Uh, oh, please, that you yes. Can, uh, go to for for more information. That's hml.ucsd.edu/hml. Uh, it talks mm -hmm. about some of the exciting research that we're doing. Okay. Thanks, Thank Jim. Yep.